The Pali word mangala, sometimes translated as blessing, more precisely means protection. Prior to the Buddha, different mangalas or blessings were little ceremonial things, tying a string around your wrist, putting some water on you, uttering words of encouragement. But the Buddha basically changed the meaning, or changed the means by which protection came, and also changed the meaning of what protection meant. The kind of protection he's talking about is protection you give to yourself through your own actions. That protects you not only from things outside, but more importantly from things inside your own mind. Because that's where the real dangers lie. As he pointed out one time, probably the worst thing someone else can do to you is to get you to do unskillful things, because then that becomes your karma, your bad karma. And from that you can suffer for a long time. They can rob you and abuse you, or even kill you. But the results of that last only one lifetime. But if you do something really bad, it becomes your karma. That suffering from that can last for many lifetimes. So you have to train your mind so that you're not easily influenced by un other people's unskillful ideas. So here again, the protection has to lie inside. You start out by trying to find wise people and give you an idea of how to deal with your own inner dangers. And then you carry out their instructions, and you become more discerning yourself about what those dangers are. The whole purpose of the meditation is that you're not just simply following instructions. The meditation is designed to make you sensitive to what's happening in the mind, and also give you a sense of solidity, so that when something happens in the mind you're not blown away by it, you're not influenced by it. You will watch things arising and passing away in the mind, good or bad. And not give in to their power, unless you see that it's something really is good. That's the kind of quality you're trying to develop, that kind of stability, and also the alertness to see clearly what's happening. Because all too often the unskillful things come into the mind, and they can disguise themselves. You don't really know what's happening. All you see is the disguise. You don't see what's lurking behind it. But if you become really alert, you begin to see there are layers to your intentions, and you can begin to see where something unskillful is coming in. So the purpose of the meditation is to make you independent, so you can rely on yourself. We see this in the concept of refuge. So again, we, we take refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and Sangha. And on the exterior level, we take them as examples to see this is how wise people live. This is how they find ha genuine happiness. But then you have to internalize their example. That's the second stage, when the refuge comes inside and the qualities of mind you develop through your being generous, being virtuous, through your meditation, developing a solid, centered state of mind, and then the alertness and discernment where you can see things clearly. Ultimately, it takes you to another level of refuge. One of the names for nirvana is refuge. That's totally safe, because it's not affected by anything at all. So there are levels of refuge and there are levels of protection, recognizing that the big dangers are the ones inside. 
but you also have the potential to develop good qualities and can counteract those dangers. That's why the Buddha teaches heedfulness. Heedfulness means a sense that there are dangers that you have to watch out for, but also that you can be careful enough to avoid those dangers. Focus is not just on the dangers, the focus is also on the potential for your actions to make a difference, to offer you protection. If there are nothing but dangers and you couldn't do anything about them, then heedfulness wouldn't make any difference. It's because you can make a difference. You can develop good qualities, skillful qualities, solid qualities inside. That's why heedfulness has meaning. So keep an eye out for the dangers outside, but remember the worst thing that someone can do to you is to get you to do something unskillful, to internalize their bad attitudes, their unskillful attitudes, and then start acting on those. That's because a lot of our attitudes do come from other people. We've got to clean things out. We can't totally blame them. After all, if you didn't have the germs for greed, aversion, and delusion in the mind, then other people's germs couldn't infect you. But you've got those potentials, and when you meet up with them and other people, it's very easy for them to grow. But if you're developing concentration, discernment, mindfulness, you're developing the tools by which you can step back from those influences and begin to see them for what they are. Some of them are firmly entrenched. They're really big issues in the mind. They've been around for a long time. And your mind gets distorted in the same way that, say, if you've been wearing a bad pair of shoes for several years, it's going to have an effect on your posture. And when you get good shoes, then they don't feel right. So it's going to take time to get used to the good shoes, get used to the, the attitudes that the Buddha does recommend. But the fact that it's going to take a long time should not be an obstacle. It shouldn't be discouraging. It can be discouraging, but you can't let it be discouraging. The Buddha recommends that you question anything in the mind that seems unskillful, and at first it's going to put up all kinds of resistance. It's like a politician. There are politicians that tell us there's no way that there can be universal health care. So they just want us to put the question away and forget about it. And if you're intimidated by them, that's the end of the matter. But if you keep questioning, why, 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 after a while they will have to respond. It's the same in the mind. You have unskillful attitude, unskillful protection, <coughs> excuse me, perceptions. And they don't want to be asked. And so they'll try to discourage you, they'll try to look bigger than they are. Like those frogs that puff themselves up, or the lizards we have that do push ups to look bigger. But if you're bigger than they are, then you begin to see how puny their push ups are. So you've got to make your mind bigger than the attitudes that are unskillful inside. You've got to make your concentration bigger, your goodwill bigger. All the good qualities in the mind, you have to make them large. Remember the Buddha's examples of making your mind like earth, making your mind like the river Ganges, making it like space. I mean, space is infinite. As your concentration and your discernment get larger than the perceptions you've been holding on to, you can begin to see they're not quite so big in their efforts to intimidate you are not so scary, they're not so convincing anymore. So we protect ourselves by developing what's good inside. And we stay confident that okay, the influence that other people have on us is possible. The dangers they can do to us are possible only because we have unskillful attitudes within us. So if we can get rid of those unskillful attitudes, then nobody can really do us any serious danger. 
They can harm the body, but it only goes as far as the body. It doesn't go into the mind. And you always have to remember that the mind slash heart, in other words, your mind and heart, that's what the polyterm jitta covers, the mind and the heart together. That's your most precious possession. That's what really matters. Because as we live in this world, we have to have a sense of priorities. There are some things we do have to sacrifice. We can't have everything we want. And there are times when different parts of us are in danger, and you have to decide, well, what's really valuable inside? And if you remember, your mind is what's valuable. Your actions are your treasures. Then you protect those. Your goodwill is a treasure. That's why the Buddha says you protect it in the same way that a mother would protect her only child. And whatever else you have to sacrifice in order to keep that protection solid, okay, you're willing to sacrifice it because you realize, realize it's not nearly as important. When your priorities are clear in this way, and the good qualities you've developed in mind are really solid, that's when you can be really secure. <laughs>